last week in the All-Star Race in North Wilkesboro, Chase Elliott started the race in 13th place. He ended up finishing in 5th place. It was a good night for the most popular driver in NASCAR. His next race is the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway on Sunday. The race starts at 4 p.m. Eastern Time and will be broadcast on Fox. Darrell Waltrip had many amazing paint schemes from over the years. From 1976 to 1980, he ran the number 88 Gatorade car. From 1981 to 1982, he ran the Mountain Dew car. In 1983, he was sponsored by Pepsi Challenger and even Burger King as an associate sponsor. From 1984 to 1985, he ran the Budweiser car. Finally, he ran the number 17 Tide car from 1987 to 1990, driving for Hendrick Motorsports. All the paint schemes are absolutely gorgeous. Richard Petty's first start in the NASCAR Cup Series was at the Toronto Exhibition Stadium in Toronto, Canada. The King's first Cup Series start was not even in America. Richard Petty started in 17th place out of a 19 car field, but poor Richard crashed out. He would finish in 17th place. This was the second time the NASCAR Cup Series went to Canada, the first being Stamford Park in 1952. The Canadian Exhibition Stadium would stay around and live on. The facility became the home for the CFL football team, the Toronto Agronauts, in 1959. The facility would also become the home for the MLB team, Toronto Blue Jays, starting in 1977. The facility would also hold concerts for notable artists such as U2, David Bowie, ACDC, Bon Jovi, Guns N' Roses, and more. The facility would ultimately be demolished in 1999. Last Sunday for the All-Star Race at North Wilkesboro Speedway, Darrell Walter was brought back to the broadcast booth. I thought he was great. I really liked Darrell Walter as a commentator. But he deserves a great and happy retirement. Jimmy Johnson will make his third Cup Series start of the 2023 NASCAR Cup Series season. He will race in this Sunday's Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Johnson has made two Cup Series starts so far this season. Those races being the Daytona 500 and Circuit of the Americas. Unfortunately, he crashed out in both races. Hopefully he will not crash out again. After the Coca-Cola 600, he has at least one more start for this season. That race is the inaugural Chicago Street Race on July 2nd. Axel LeBay has only raced five times in the NASCAR Xfinity Series this season this year. It is unknown if he will race again the Xfinity Series again in 2023. Chase Elliott raced in the season opening truck race at Daytona earlier this season. He was driving because the regular driver, Jake Garcia, who was slated to run the 35 this season, was not old enough to race at Daytona. He had not turned 18. Chase started the race in 14th place. He finished the race in 10th place. That is a pretty solid race. Dale Jarrett had a great career in NASCAR, but did you know he has a son that raced in NASCAR? His son, Jason Jarrett, started the year 2000 driving full-time in the Xfinity Series. However, he was not good, and he failed to qualify for multiple, multiple races. He was even replaced by Hutt Strickler for one race. He has not raced in the Xfinity Series since then, but did a couple of starts in the Cup Series and did starts in ARCA. But wait, it gets even better. 
Daniel Jarrett has a son named Zach Jarrett, who is a left fielder in baseball. He was drafted by the Baltimore Orioles in the 28th round of the 2017 MLB Draft. Fast forward to 2021, and he was let go by the Orioles. He went from playing in double-A ball for the Norfolk Tides to being canned. He eventually signed on to play for the Gastonia Honey Hunters, a team based in Gastonia, North Carolina. The team plays in the South Division of the Atlantic League of Professional Baseball. The team also is a partner league of the MLB. Thanks for watching. And tell me what was your favorite card that I pulled from the video.